this Sunday Empowerment Worship Service here at Kingdom Life Temple. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory. In Colossians 1 verses 13 to 14 it says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. If your right hand is raised, repeat after me. I have redemption through Jesus Christ's blood and the forgiveness of sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, on today, God. Thank you for your redeeming blood, your redeeming power on today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we praise your name, God, on today, God. We are thankful, oh Lord Jesus, for how you forgave us of our sins, Lord Jesus. But Lord God, even now, God, we confess our sins to you, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, right now, God, that you forgive us of all of our trespasses, Lord. Forgive us of all of our iniquities, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord Jesus. Thanking you, oh God, in advance, God, for your redemption power. Thanking you, oh God, for your blood that was shed on Calvary for us, Lord. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we bless your name on today, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you continue, God, to use us for your glory, use us for your service on today, God. It's our prayer, Lord God. Lord Jesus, your redeeming power, God, that washes away our sins, God. Your redeeming power, Lord Jesus, oh God, that, that healed us, that delivered us, oh God, from everything where we should have been headed to hell, God. You redeemed us, God, and you saved us of our sins, God. Thank you for saving us, God. Thank you for saving us of our iniquity. Thank you, God, for saving us of our sins. Thank you, God, for looking over our shortcomings, God, because of your grace, because of your mercy, God. We are so thankful to you, Lord Jesus. We are thankful to you, Jesus. Lord, we are so thankful to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. As we make this declaration unto the Lord, I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places through Jesus Christ. Let us pray on that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing us, God, with every spiritual blessing, Lord God. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, for blessing our houses, God. Thank you, God, for how you are blessing here at Kingdom Life Temple. Thank you, Jesus, for how you are blessing, God, in this community, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, God, for your blessings, God. Lord God, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you will pour down blessings, O oh God, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your blessings, God. We command a release of your blessings, God, upon this house, God. Command a blessings, oh God, in every family, every household, Lord Jesus, in this place, oh God. Lord Jesus, command a release, oh God, of your blessings, God, in this community, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord, as they see you, God. Help them to seek your face, God. Help them to seek your face, oh God. Help them to seek your face, oh God. Help them to turn from their wicked ways. Help them to turn from their wicked ways. Help them to turn from their wicked ways, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your our blessings are already being released from the heavenly realm, God. Our blessings are already being released from the heavenly realm, God. But God, we give you praise, God. We give you honor, God. We give you honor, God. We give you honor, God. We glory to your name. We give glory to your name. We give glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So you make this declaration to the Lord. 
I am saved by grace through faith. I am not saved by my own works. Let us pray on that. Oh God, thank you, God, for your saving grace. Thank you for your saving power, Lord Jesus. It's only because of your grace and your mercies, God, that we are yet here in the land of the living God. So, Lord God, we thank you, God. We are grateful for your grace, God. We are grateful for your grace, oh Lord Jesus. Continue to shower down your grace upon our life. Continue to power down your grace, oh God, in every area, over every circumstance, every situation, God. Grace us, God, with your presence here today. Grace us, oh God, here with your presence, oh God. Grace us, oh Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we are saved by faith, God. Through your grace, God. We are not saved by our works, God. We are not saved by our works, God. But we are saved because of your grace through faith, oh God. So, Lord God, we are grateful to you, God. We are grateful for you, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, oh Jesus. Lord God, we should have been dead. We should have been cut off, God. But God, because we are not under the law, but we are under grace, God. We thank you, God, for giving us another opportunity to come into this place on today. Giving us another opportunity, oh Lord Jesus, to be saved, oh God, by your grace through faith, God. We are thankful, Lord Jesus. We are thankful, Lord Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. We make our last declaration. I have what I say I have. I can do what I say I can do. For God's promises are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray on that. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, God. We decree and declare, God, whatever, oh God, we have been praying for, God, and you will answer our prayers, God. Lord God, we believe in you, God. We believe, God, that you shall answer, God. You shall provide, God. For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, God. We shall not want for anything, God. Every need shall be met. Every need shall be met. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we pray even now, God. Lord God, we decree and declare that we have what we say we have, God. We have healing because we have decreed it, God. We have salvation because we have decreed it, God. We are holy because we have decreed it, God. We are righteous because we have decreed it, God. So we have what we say, God. We have deliverance because we have what we say we have, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, continue the work in us, God. Complete the work in us, O oh Lord Jesus. Make us into the men and women of God that you have called us to be, that you have created us to be, that you have created us, God, to give your name to praise, Lord Jesus. For the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, Lord Jesus. So Lord God, we are grateful for this time of prayer, of intercession, God. As we go to the furnace of the service, God, we pray, God, that your glory, that your anointing, God, will be in this place, that it will flow, oh God, into every community home, oh God. Lord God, we pray even now, Jesus, that you continue, oh God, to show yourself faithful to us, oh God, as we can make faithful to you, oh Lord Jesus. Lord God, right now, Lord Jesus, we pray, God, that you will release fresh oil in this place, God. Fresh anointing, God. Fresh oil, fresh oil, God. Fresh oil. From the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, God. Here's our prayer on today, God. Let someone be saved. Someone be delivered. Someone be baptized with the Holy Ghost, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We pray this, oh God. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. You are now in the hands of our praise and worship leader, our Lady Sandra.
Our 21-day Consecration Fast prayer service will be taking place this Wednesday and Friday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Doors open at 6.45 p.m. Sunday Empowerment Worship Service with Pastor Jay Samuel Canyon takes place next Sunday. Service begins at 11.30 a.m. Doors open at 11.15 a.m. The series is Increase, Enlarge, and Take Over. Our KLT 21-Day Consecration Fest is from January 14th through February 4th at 6 a.m. Our theme is Next Level, Increase, Enlarge, and Take Over. And our theme scripture comes from Job chapter 8, verse 7. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Stay connected with KLT by sending a text message to 833-338-9693 to receive KLT updates and events. Thank you for watching. Kindly follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram or TikTok or on our website at www.kingdomlifetemplenj.com KLT, changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. And we will read this together. We will read this together at this time. I am a giver and I am glad about it. Because I am a giver, I expect increase all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, grant unto me increase in every area of my life. Promotions, rebates, refunds, money in the mail, unexpected checks, and prosperity all the days of my life. God is talking to someone about me and giving me uncommon favor with uncommon people in uncommon places. Lord, right now, as I cheerfully give, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. It is well. It is so. Amen. 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 At this time, we will receive whatever offering that you have to give at this time. I know some of you have already given, so God bless you. 
Amen. And at this time, we're getting right into the word. I think this scripture is coming from 1 Timothy. Actually, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Again, we thank God for being here in the house of the Lord. We thank God for our lady, Sandra Canyon, to all of you, the members and the guests that are here on today at KLT. Hallelujah. Uh, where we are changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The song medley says about how I love the Lord. I love you and there is none like you. Hallelujah. I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me, it just was best away, that's why I praise you, I lift you up, Lord, I magnify your name, that's why
descends from all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none. There is none like you, Jesus. I say, everyone standing at this time, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for this day, God. Even now, Lord Jesus, we pray that you would decrease flesh, that your spirit might be increased. Oh, God, is up a prayer on today, God. Lord Jesus, as we go into this series, oh, God, next level, increase, enlarge, and take over, God. We pray, God, that you will speak to this house, speak to your people on today is our prayer God in the name of Jesus we pray Lord Jesus and even now God let the meditation of my heart oh God be acceptable in thy sight oh Lord my strength and my redeemer all the people of God say amen amen and amen the scripture is 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For God hath not given us the spirit of what? Fear. But of power, power and, love and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Thank you for the reading of the scripture. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So again, this is the beginning of our, our series, theme of next level. Increase, enlarge, and take over. Next level. Increase, enlarge, and take over. How I many know that before you can receive and go to the next level in God to receive, increase, enlarge, and take over you first have to have nothing to fear you have to turn every fear every doubt over to jesus christ first in order for you to increase enlarge and take over how god has decreed and declared for this house to do so so again second timothy 1 and 7 as we focus on this on today how many know of the game of whack-a-mole? You usually see this in a carnival, or you can find it in some of these other arcades. A so whack-a-mole where you have a, a little mallet hammer thing, right? Where you, it keeps, the moles keep coming out of the different holes that's here. You have to keep hitting it. So that's a whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole is a popular arcade game invented in 1976 by Aaron Fetcher of Creative Engineering, Inc. A typical whack-a-mole machine consists of a large waist-level cabinet with five holes in its top and a large, soft black mallet. Each hole contains a single plastic mold and the machinery necessary to move it up and down. Once the game starts, the moles will begin to pop up from their holes at random. The object of the game is to force the individual moles back into their holes by hitting them directly on the head with the mallet, thereby adding to the player's score. So the faster you hit the mold, the more points you will receive as the player. The more quickly this is done, the higher the final score will be for you. So the cabinet has a three-digit readout of the current player score. And on later models, a best score of the day readout. The mallet is usually attached to the game by a rope in order to prevent anyone from walking away with it. Now, if the player does not strike a mole within a certain time or with, an, or with enough force, 
it will eventually sink back into its hole with no score. Although gameplay starts out slow enough for most people to hit all of the modes that rise up, it gradually increases in speed, with each mode spending less time above the hole and with more modes outside of the holes at the same time. So what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Have you taken time today to combat your fears with the truth of God's word? With the ever negative news cycles we're exposed to on a weekly basis, it's no wonder that so many people struggle with frequent fear and anxiety. Regardless of our feelings, regardless of our situations, regardless of the uncontrollable, we serve a God who is all powerful over our feelings, situations, and even the things in our life that are outside of our control. Hallelujah. Fear, fear. The fear is defined as an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger real or imagined an unpleasant feeling triggered by the perception of danger real or imagined and there are some people that have such fear in their life they believe whether it's real or imagined that some people suffer from anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder or even post-traumatic stress disorder. But fear, fear is a powerful and primitive human emotion. Since humans have reigned on this earth, there has always been some type of fear that we have had to have, whether that was fear or reverence that we had for God or fear after Adam and Eve that an animal would attack them, right? They used, they had to have fear that they would be attacked, right? Because after the original sin took place, you know how animals started to move in chains outside of the will of what God had meant for the animals to be was for it to be just harmonious, like we have dogs and cats. Every animal was supposed to be like that. But it was the original sin that didn't change it all. Fear alerts us to the presence of danger. And it was critical in keeping our ancestors alive. Fear can be divided into two responses. Biochemical and emotional. Biochemical and emotional. The biochemical response is universal, while the emotional response is highly individual. Fear is a natural emotion and a survival mechanism. When we confront a perceived threat, our bodies respond in specific ways. Physical reactions to fear include sweating, Increased heart rate and high adrenaline levels that make us extremely alert. This physical response is also known as the fight or flight response, in which your body prepares itself to either enter combat or to run away. Even as I think about the series Young Sheldon, a, a young Sheldon was like, there's you know, there's either fight or flight. He said, I'm taking flight. So he went running away out of the classroom. But this chem biochemical reaction is likely an evolutionary development. It's an automatic response that is crucial to our survival. The emotional response to fear is highly personalized because fear involves some of the same chemical reactions in our brains that 
positive emotions like happiness and excitement do. Feeling fear under certain circumstances can be seen as fun, like when you watch scary movies or when you're on a roller coaster ride. As long as it's not too big of a roller coaster ride, because then, then my wife won't be on there. See, very fearful, right? Very fearful. But some people are adrenaline junkies. Adrenaline junkies driving on extreme sports and other fear-inducing thrill situations. Others have a negative reaction to the feeling of fear. Avoiding fear-inducing situations at all costs. Although the physical reaction is the same, fear may be perceived as either positive or negative, depending on that person. Fear, what does that stand for? It could stand for, fear could stand for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Sometimes we fear, we doubt, and that's, what the, that's why our minds are the battlefield. Our minds are the battlefield because enemy wants to distract our minds with, with seeds of fear, seeds of discord, seeds of, of, of fear and doubt. Because it can, it can be something that really isn't real, but we believe it's real. So then we begin to be fearful. We, we begin to doubt God. And that is what Satan desires for us to be distracted to the point that we have the um, that we don't have the ability to really trust and put our faith in God. Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, "The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself." But what does the Bible say about fear? As we just read in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what does the Bible say about fear? Number one, it says that the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. The spirit God gave us does not make us timid. Fear has no place in the life of a Christian, of a believer. By the name of Jesus Christ who lives in us, we've been given authority over fear. If we're starting to feel anxiety or fear creeping into our minds, we can rebuke this in Jesus' name and find peace in the spirit of God that gives us his power, his love, and self-discipline. Yes. Number two, be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. Be strong and courageous. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 says, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. Again, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, nor forsake thee. While them in this passage refers to the giant inhabitants of the promised land prior to God delivering them to the Israelites. The core principles in this verse can be applied to giants both literal and, and, and metaphorically in our own lives as well. If you are living your life according to the will of God, he promises throughout scripture to never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Ask him what his will is for you and learn to follow it with boldness. Learn to follow it with boldness. 
combat fear with the word of the Lord. Combat fear with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's necessary in order to go to the next level where we can have increase, enlarge, and take over by the power of God. Number three, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4. Says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. So David, a shepherd boy, was more than familiar with dark valleys in this physical world. He relied on God for strength to lead his flock to safety. But when he wrote this, he was referring to the Lord as his shepherd. His shepherd. Have you allowed the Lord to be your shepherd, the ruler of your heart today? Psalm 23 in its entirety is a great reminder of how God protects his flock. Yes. God protects his people that are living in him that have accepted Christ as their Savior. Yes. We may not always understand his ways, but we can rest in the assurance that his ways are always good. Hallelujah. Number four. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Though David was pursued by King Saul and threatened with every real physical death, more than most of us can say for ourselves. David held fast to the truth that God truly is in control. Yes. So it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how many enemies seem to be surrounding us. It doesn't matter how many enemies or circumstances seem to be turning around in our not good favor. But God is in control. God turns all those things into our favor because we are in the blessings of the Lord. Psalm 27 verses 1 through 4. Psalm 27 verses 1 through 4 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What does that say again? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and and they stumbled and they they stumbled and they fell down. Though and host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One day have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. That's what the word says. So the next time you find yourself starting to let fear into your thoughts, letting fear into your mind, letting fear into your spirit, letting seeds of doubt enter into your spirit. Remember that God is with you always. This is his promise to those who live within his will. We can live fearless. We can live Fearless, emboldened by the strength of our God. No matter what is going on around us, once again, this truth is found in God's word. Over and over and over, God reminds us that we don't need to fear 
in any circumstance and still over and over and over we humans tend to fear we humans tend to fear in Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3 and verse 10 Psalm 46 verses 1 to 3 and verse 10 it says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Glory. Hallelujah. God is to be exalted in our lives. Yes. God is to be exalted in the lives of the believer. Hallelujah. 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 Aristotle once said, fear is pain arising from the anticipation of evil. So we're expecting evil into our lives. But if we're not supposed to have a spirit of fear, we're not even supposed to be fearful of the enemy. We're not supposed to be fearful of Satan, of his imps, of demons. Hallelujah. Because God has all power. Hallelujah. And because I am in Christ and Christ is in me, I am powerful. I am righteous. I am holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Rosa Parks said, I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear. Knowing what must be done does go away with fear. That's one thing we have to learn, people of God. We must have a made up mind. We must have a made up mind mind because we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear when you're in the house of the Lord. You have nothing to fear. When you're in the spirit of God, you have nothing to fear. When you are praying to God, when you are his son, when you are his daughter, you have nothing to fear. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah, Jesus. We, that's why we have to walk in the strength of our great God. We have to walk knowing the word. What the word said. Because the enemy comes to distract us. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life. And you might have it more abundantly. God wants you to have life. More abundantly, someone give God a praise. Glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have nothing to fear. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Though the enemy comes to steal, to kill, to enter, to destroy, I believe in the word of God. I believe that God is going to make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. So now that we understand fear, now that we know how to overcome fear by the word, of the Lord. Now it's time for us to go to the next level in God. The next level in ministry. The next level in the anointing of God. The next level of oh God in his spirit in order for an increase in lives and take over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to fear. Let us trust in the word of the Lord. Help let us trust in God. The God who we call our great savior. Jesus Christ is our great deliverer. We must believe in him. Believe what God is saying. That's why when we make declarations unto the Lord. Decree and declare healing. Decree and declare salvation. We decree and declare that everything that is meant for my good shall take place in my life. Hallelujah. That's all what God wants his people to do in order to get to the next level. 
So we can have what? Increase. Enlarge. Take over. Hallelujah. So we will continue again next week. And we'll be going to the book of Job to our theme scripture. Hallelujah. But we do thank God for you. And at this time, we are preparing for our Holy Communion. And we know that Holy Communion, we are you already have received that when you came in through the doors. So now at this time, we'll be reading the scripture. And as we know, Holy Communion is for the believer, for those that have been saved in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Holy Communion scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 30. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do so the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. This time, I say, want to stand at this time with your wafer and your cup. Lord Jesus, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you would Bless these vessels, God, these sacraments, Lord Jesus, unto you, Lord Jesus, Lord God. Even now, God, we thank you for this wafer that is symbolic of your broken body, Lord Jesus. We are grateful, God, for this cup, oh God, this is symbolic, God, of your shed blood, Lord Jesus. Bless it for our nourishment. Bless us with our spirits, oh God, on today, Lord Jesus. Let someone be healed, oh God, on today by even receiving communion, God. Lord God, for there is power in communion, there is power in your blood, because the blood still works, God. And we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. This time, you may take your wafer, eat ye all of it. Drink ye all of it. Amen. Yeah, we will now give the benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. And all the people of God say, Amen. And amen.